Now that we've installed the software for our testing solution, let's look at how to perform a test with AppLoader. Every test begins with a scenario. The best practice is to start with a diagram outlining the business processes you want to test. This flowchart will become the blueprint for your scenario. So, say we want to create a scenario to purchase an airline ticket. The first step in the process is to open the airline website. Next, we'll need to search for flights. And finally, we'll select round trip tickets. So we've got three main functions that can be built or recorded separately, or together. Now, let's also say we want to know not only how long this process takes overall, but how long specific functions within the overall process take. For example, we can track the amount of time the website takes to load, as well as the time elapsed to reveal a total trip cost for the flights we specify. Believe it or not, the hardest part of creating a scenario has just been completed. The way you explain how to test an application is the way you build a scenario. Everyday terminology like open browser, double click icon, or enter text easily translates to Scenario Builder's intuitive set of actions. Furthermore, Scenario Builder's recorder lets you create a scenario by simply using your application. If you're sensing that Scenario Builder is different, you're right. Scenario Builder's uniquely simple front-end approach is not affected by or concerned with protocols. Any application accessible from a Windows desktop can be tested with Scenario Builder. Fat Client, Java, .NET, Citrix, or any combination of protocols. It's all the same to Scenario Builder. Now getting back to our diagram, let's see how our outline converts to a scenario. First, notice that the business processes described in our diagram are components in our scenario. A look inside a component shows the individual steps or actions that go into that particular business process. While not mandatory, components do provide an organizational framework that facilitates scenario management and troubleshooting. Also, components can be called multiple times from within the current scenario or by other scenarios within the project. In our diagram, we noted the need to track response times for the website to load and for the total trip cost to calculate. In our scenario, we use transactions to mark and time these steps. By framing actions with transaction markers, we can isolate and report response times for specific segments of our scenario. Back to the scenario window, check out the On Failure section listed at the end of the scenario. In a load testing environment where hundreds if not thousands of users are active, it's critical to include On Failure behavior to reset a workstation, keeping your user pool active and thus maintaining the integrity of the test. In this scenario, On Failure closes the internet browser to reset the workstation and raises a failure notification so that the execution report reflects the incomplete iteration. Another key to this scenario is the attachment of a variables or CSV file. This one is called airline.csv and you'll notice it contains values for a number of the input fields we'll be using in our ticket search. By parameterizing our data inputs, we'll be testing the website in a way that real-life traffic would. One last thing to note about this scenario before we play it back is that it uses a rendezvous point to pause users at a step until a specified number arrive. Rendezvous points allow you to intensify the load on a specific function of the application under test by holding and releasing a group of users simultaneously. Scenario Builder lets you play back your scenarios as many times as you want to work through and resolve any issues that might come up. And just to prove the point made earlier, it doesn't matter to Scenario Builder whether the site is written in .NET, Java, or whatever. Scenario Builder advances through the website just as a real user would. Here we see our variable data being entered into the search form.
Notice that Scenario Builder provides a play-by-play -play account of the status of the scenario as it's playing back. After a successful run-through, we'll set the reference time and send our scenario to the uploader controller. Join us in our next video as we create and run a test plan from the uploader controller.